Air Force General John Hyten was nominated in April by President Trump to become vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But he has been accused of sexual assault and making unwanted advances by one of his former assistants, Colonel Catherine Spletstozer. Spletstozer has been in the Army for 28 years. She has received glowing fitness reviews, including from General Hyten himself, who wrote in 2017 that Spletstozer was in the top 1 percent of all colonels I have seen in my 36 years of service, and that, quote, Kathy will be the kind of general officer the Army needs, ready today for brigadier general, unlimited potential to lead. At his Senate confirmation hearing yesterday, General Hyten denied Spletstozer's allegations. It has been a painful time for me and my family, but I want to state to you and to the American people in the strongest possible terms that these allegations are false. There, were, there, were, there was a very extensive, thorough investigation that Dr. Wilson described, which revealed the truth. Nothing happened, ever. Today, the Senate Armed Services Committee voted to move Hyten's nomination to the full Senate, with Republican Senator Joni Ernst joining six other Democrats in voting against General Hyten. And a warning, there is explicit graphic language in this conversation with Colonel Spletstozer, which I recorded a short time ago. With me now is Army Colonel Catherine Spletstozer. Colonel, thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. So tell us first, what was your relationship with General Hyten before these advances that you say happened took place? Well, we were, we were I was his CAG director, his Commander's Action Group director. Um, I basically developed a pretty good relationship with him early on. Um, I was probably uh, his most favorite subordinate, first among equals. That's the way he treated me. Saw him every day? At work. Every, every day, uh, all day, and on travel, yes. And, and you say that these uh, unwelcome advances started in early 2017. Just give us an example. Um, so it started in January 2017 on a trip to Palo Alto. Um, and we were doing some work in his hotel after his hotel room after work hours, and he asked me to stay behind. We went over and covered some stuff uh, for the next day uh, engagements at Stanford. And then, uh, as I was leaving, he actually stopped me on my way out the door, pulled my hand to his groin, and he had an erect penis. And I was very shocked and confused, like I didn't understand what that meant. Um, I was mortified. Um, he, I just turned around and he gave me sort of a face that was uh, very disconcerting. Um, like he thought I would like that. He didn't say anything. Um, I said, uh, I did basically didn't say anything. I left and that was the first encounter. I thought it could have been a mistake or an accident. And you, you've said that uh, these advances continued off and on through 2017 and then in December, something more serious happened? Well, I would say in June, something more serious oh. happened. Um, in June in Washington, D.C., and we made a lot of trips to D.C., um, this is another time where we were actually going over some work for the next day um, to prepare for some engagements um, in D.C., and he had asked me to stay and go over some work. Um, and in that, it was in his hotel suite, um, and it was after the duty hour, but it wasn't very late. Um, and he stood over my shoulder, he grabbed my breast, and turned me around and started kissing me um, passionately. And I pushed him off and I said, this is not going to happen. Like, what are you doing? Um, and he said, oh, I, I just wanted to see how that felt. I thought you would like it. And I'm like, I didn't like it. Why would you think that? And he's like, well, I thought you liked me. And I was like, sir, um, I do like you, but not like that. And he's like, well, why not? And I'm like, you're married, you're my boss, and you're not my type. And so he asked, like, what my type was, and I said, someone not married, someone not my boss, and I prefer men of color. And he made a snarky remark about, that's why myself and his former aide got along so well, because he was an African-American guy. We proceeded to have a conversation that was um, very argumentative. Um, he got upset. He actually sat down on, on the couch, um, and actually started crying, and I was very confused and shocked at that. Um, he's, in a, he's a very emotional guy, but now I'm sort of in a position where he did something incredibly wrong to me, and I don't really know what to do, but I got really upset and really angry and mad. Um, 
But you continued to work with him through I, I did. So I thought he got the point, like, uh, that, it, you know, it can never happen again. Um, and, and then in December, you were on another travel. Uh, yeah, there were some small him. incidents in between there. Right. Um, but, yes, we were at the Reagan Security Forum, the de defense In forum. California. Yes. And he uh, asked you, he showed up at your hotel room outside the yes. door. And you let him in? Yeah, so, no, it was, it was after the dinner. Um, that and it was a great um, event. The whole the whole forum went really really well, um, and so as I was preparing to go to sleep for the evening, I was putting on face cream and I get a knock on the door, and I thought, oh, it's probably the aide or the commo or the security detail, and it was him, and he just walked in my room, and I'm like thinking something was wrong, like did did something happen, did I screw up? did I not meet the standard or something for that day? And he's like, no, 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 I just want to talk. He had come into my room with a work binder. And so he's like, I just want to talk. And I'm like, uh, okay. So he sat on the bed and he asked me to sit next to him. And I was really confused then. I was like, oh, this is sort of weird, but I don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, everything has been going really well, so I, don't, I wasn't afraid. Um, then he took my hand and I stood up and I was like, no, and he grabbed me. He stood up and started kissing me passionately. And and he would not stop. Even though I said he said he wanted to make love to me. I said, I that's not gonna happen. Um, like I think I might have said, no, you want to have sex. And he's like, no, I want to make love. And I'm like, uh, just trying to get loose from him. And I, I really couldn't. And he said well, you like it. You know you're responding to this. You like it. And I said, no, I'm not. Um, I don't like it. Um, he proceeded to still kiss me and hold me pretty tight and touch me uh, on the butt and some other areas. And then finally, he was grinding on my leg, which was kind of weird. And then he ejaculated after a while. And so I was mortified. I pushed him off. Um, I was really scared at that point. Like, at that point, I wasn't, like, physically scared. But now, this has gone to a whole other level. This of, is your superior officer. This is a four-star general. Four-star general. I'm a colonel. He's a six-foot-four man. I'm five-seven. Um, this crossed the line in a big way. But you didn't report it to anyone. Is that right, at the time? That's correct. Why not? So I, I, I didn't really feel like I was comfortable having a venue to report it. His security detail, they're there to protect him, not me. So you thought that you would just keep it to yourself? I, I did. I thought he really, in the June incident, I thought he got the point and that it, would, that it really would never happen again. I know he does love his wife. So I was like, oh, this, must, this is just sort of an infatuation. Um, and I, so I was just really confused. You, you, as you know, General Heighton completely denies this. We heard what he said uh, just a moment ago. Uh, he says it never happened. And then you have the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. They looked into this, and I'm quoting. They said, we spoke to 53 people in three countries and 13 states and reviewed thousands of emails, but said they concluded, quote, there was insufficient evidence to support any finding of misconduct. So that's not exactly true. So. Uh... Air Force Office of Special Investigations reports do not make those type of determinations. They, sent, they are fact gatherers. They present the facts. They did corroborate every single thing I said in my sworn statement, that everything that I said happened. There were some other things to corroborate, less the sex acts, which I went in saying, this, is, this will probably be a he said, she said. But you, you finally did go public after he was nominated. For this position, so I didn't. I didn't go public. I made an appropriate. Made it. Yeah. So um, through discussing um, the issue with the Department of Defense Inspector General, who had asked me for some more information, um, we, I had been dealing with them on the other investigations that were, were had been concluded, and they said, "Look, if if there's something more, you need to tell us now." I talked to my boss and said, "You know." kind of hinted around, this is kind of what it is. And he's like, that's a tough choice. Um, think about it hard. Um, and if you do decide, we'll send it through the IG first, and then they'll 
will it, it would go to a law enforcement agency. So what do you make when when all is said and done, Colonel Splatstozer, of how this was handled by the military? The agents in charge admitted they were being rushed and there was a lot of pressure to uh, make this kind of get done, get it done quick. How do you the the public people watching you right now are going to say this is her version of events versus his version? Is that how you see it? Is it is it she said he said or so is I, it more I, than that? I went in and said basically, look, this is going to be hard to prove the actual sex act, but here you're going to you're going to find some other stuff, and they did. I mean, if when they said there was insufficient evidence to charge him. That investigation uncovered a whole lot of thing about General Hyten's leadership style, and at a minimum, you mean negative, negative, it corroborated evidence where he was untruthful in his in his OSI interview, um, and that was corroborated by at least twelve statements not that were in that investigation. Um, it was also corroborated. I mean, he could have been charged with dereliction of duty, conduct unbecoming, failure to maintain good order and discipline, and. This is the hardest one because he always talked about uh, his red line was treating people with dignity and respect. But I would argue he didn't treat me with dignity and respect at all by doing that or the way I was treated. You also said yesterday, um, Colonel, that you said you're doing this so that General Hyten doesn't do this when he's, if he is confirmed as the vice chair of the Joint Chiefs. So the, the bottom line for me, I felt like it was a moral responsibility. At that point, like when his nomination was announced, it's because he told me he was retiring. Uh, my replacement was a man. Um, his timeline was short. I, I took him seriously when he said that. And then he gets nominated, and now that fundamentally changes the, qu the equation. And that's, I mean, I, I, I was really upset. and. That's when I had the conversation with my brother and my boss and said, look, what should I do? And it became sort of a, a responsibility to report it so people know and that it would ensure that he didn't get the opportunity to do this to somebody else for the next four years. What signal do you think this sends to other women uh, or men who are the victims of sexual assault in the military? It basically says, look, if your, your boss is a general officer, um, no matter what you do, you, you won't be taken seriously, despite the evidence. It means that uh, they will try to blame, shame, and discredit you because the OSI investigation didn't investigate him. It really did. It was victim-focused, like trying to discredit me, and it failed to do that. Um, but it also says, um, hey, not only will we not believe you and will discredit you along the way, but we'll probably let him get promoted too. Colonel Catherine Splett Stozer, thank you very much for talking with us. You're welcome.